you can see how big it is, it barely fits on my table. I've no idea, I mean nothing works obviously. I've no idea. I don't know what this is or where it came from. Um, it was just given to me as found in a shed. So this end comes off. And I hesitate to wonder what we find inside. Ah, some kind of circuit board. Well, I don't seem to want to come out either, so that's interesting. So that's some kind of circuit board. I think it would just be a big battery. Um, on the front here we've got <coughs> oh. uh, a ring. Well, that is practically a headlamp bulb. Look at that. That's, that's actually glass and metal with what looks like a, a halogen bulb inside it. Uh, there's a small circuit board at the bottom, I don't know how well that will show up. And presumably there's a bulb in this part. I wonder if that circuit board makes this flash. But as I say, nothing, nothing does anything. Oh, I wonder if it was rechargeable. There's a pip there to recharge something I should think and a little red light. Well, I suppose it's possible it was rechargeable. Alright let's see. Remember black goes to white because of course you would connect a black wire to a white wire wouldn't you? It's the obvious thing to do. So that's black to white. And then, oh, that's come off of the glass. And then blue looks like it's screwed on. Does it pull off? No, I can't see it pull off anywhere else. So, let's see if uh, Mr. Pocket Rocket will undo it. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's too tight for the pocket rocket. Uh, let's try the Bosch. Going the other way. Is that a good enough fit? Oh, that does it with ease. Alright, so Mr. Bosch to the rescue. That can come off of there. We'll put that nut back on there so we don't lose it. If we can get it back on. That's it. Alright, yeah, so that seems to be, like I say, I think that's a halogen bulb. I'll have a look at that later. So that's that bit. So that gives us that. Because I think that's going to be a flashing bulb for the amber top. And now. We've got this. I can't. I wonder where that goes. I wonder if that goes all the way up to that charge point. This doesn't seem to. Oh! Oh! Well, that's come off. Didn't see that coming. So I wonder what's. Got four little screws there. I wonder if they're what's holding it on. Um, I think the Bosch screwdriver bit might be a bit too big for these. Oh no, that's going to work. One, two, three. I'm not taking them all the way out because I know what's going to happen. They're just going to disappear on me. So, one. Two, three, four. That's better. We don't lose them. So what's this do now? Oh, that lifts off. Oh, that holds. That. 
So that wasn't a charger, that was just a plug for... Oh yeah, this looks like a fluorescent lamp. So that looks like a fluorescent bulb. And now we've got... I don't know, battery pack? Could be. Uh, not sure. Let's see if that will go in there. rely on. No, it's not going to come out with a magnet. Let's get something that's got a magnet on it. Ah, that's it, oh, a strong magnet. So that little screw holds the battery that side and there's another one buried down there. You can't see it but I can only just about see it. There we go. And again it won't stick to that but it should stick to this. Come on. Right, and there's the other screw. So that's two little screws hold that on. Now, are these marked plus and minus? Because that would help. What's this black one I'm plugged onto? Oh, hold oh, on. Classic's falling out the front. Crikey, it's tight. Come on. Is it one of those with a little pip on it that you've got to squeeze? Because I can't, I can't actually see. But what is that under there? It could be minus. Could blue be plus? Yeah, and that's red, isn't it? So that could be blue for plus. I can't quite see because they've put a plastic sleeve. Oh, there it goes. Plastic sleeve off. Let's see if we can get plastic sleeve off this side. Uh, it's so badly crimped on there that I can't get that. Let's see if that will do it. Oh, that's that one. Is that enough to, yep, that's enough to release that one. Now, uh, that's the bracket that's holding in. And this, what is it? Valve regulated rechargeable battery. Sealed lead battery. Oh, so I'm not looking at the obvious. So it's a six volt, four amp hour lead acid battery. Yeah, I wonder if we can recharge that. I'm not sure. I've got a charger for 6 volts, but I'm, I'm sure we can rig something up and just put 6 volts into it and see if it comes back to life. Just confirm the state of the battery. Put that on there, that on plus. Basically naught. <laughs> 0 0.09 volts. So, basically nothing. Right, it looks like this just slides out, so... That's the front piece of plastic for that, so we'll take that out. I think this piece of sort of aluminium, probably, or if it's aluminium, but something, this reflector, I think it probably slides out, but you can see it's cut the plastic when they forced it in, so I think that pulling it out is... <laughs> it's going to be a very tight fit. Uh, we'll worry about that in a minute. Um, this circuit board, it looks like it's, it's got screws in it down there, so I think what we'll do is we'll pop those out. Um, no, that's not a screw, that's a screw there, so it's just two. That's Mr. Walsh to the rescue again. So that's it. Oh, and that, oh, and there's a bulb on the end. So we've got a bulb. Uh, we've got some sort of mess in the bottom of there. Don't know what that's from. Now where's that wire go, I wonder? It disappears off. Into... No, I'm not sure where that wire goes. Now does this top part come off? 
Come here, let me put screws in there. Will they stay there? I think they will. All right, because I can't undo that part. I can't undo that. That's all part of one thing. All right, let's get that out of the way. Got all that put in the way. So I wonder if any of this comes apart. Let's try. It's funny that it's got all this white on it. I don't know what that is because, like I say, it was appeared to be stored in a shed. Ah, look, so that's a little plastic cap. Is there one on the other side? Yep, another little plastic cap. Perhaps the plastic has just gone white. Does grey plastic go white? Another little plastic clap. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed this. Cordless spotlight, two million. I think it said candle power, but it's obviously two million something anyway. <laughs> Not that they're exaggerating. Right, let's have a look at this. Right, that's out. So that's a little screw that holds the handle on. That's a little black screw, so we should be able to remember that one. Another little black screw that seems to hold the handle on. Alright, so we can take the handle off, can we? Oh, yep, so that's the handle off. So that bit was to the rear, but I suppose it would be, wouldn't it? It doesn't look as attractive as that bit, assuming that's attractive. So what happens now? I think that would come apart. But there's probably screws in there, isn't there? So let's have a look at this. We've got what? One. Two. Three. And then that isn't going to fit. So we're going to need... On with a longer. Is that going to fit down in there? Let's try Mr. Roy OB. Sounds like it's coming out, doesn't it? Yep, that one's coming out, I think. Yep, next one. Yep, that's coming out. Right, thank you, Mr. Roy OB. Who says you couldn't have too many cordless screwdrivers? Right, so we're going to need our magnet again. Let's try and get these. So that's one, two, three. That one doesn't want to move. This one doesn't want to move. Uh, come on, why aren't you coming out of the last little bit? Oh, that's that one. Oh, and we've got another circuit board. Right, so there, the screws for the front. Oops. It looks like we've got an awful lot of insects living inside this part of it. So if we... Oh, that's smaller than this, so we need something nice and small. What have we got lying around that's smaller than that? Oh. <laughs> no, that won't give me that back. That's not good. I know what use. I'll just use an ordinary screwdriver as it's that small. One, two. Alright, so we've got those. Ah, oh, that must be our charge part, mustn't it? Oh, there's the other screw that I haven't managed to get out. Come on, out. So that's that one. So that's our charger. That's all full of gunge, so that's going to need a good clean. Now what have we got here? Alright, let's see what people can remember. We've 
got oh a whole assortment of wires here so what have we got we've got yellow wires come in right so one side of every switch has got a yellow wire on it so can we just pop that off so that's that one so that's probably I mean it could be the plus but it might be the ground won't it I don't know come on right so that side of every switch so in fact the way I'm looking at it here that side there right and then this top one has got the red wire this one has got the blue wire and this one it's got the black wire and then we can take all that out complete with yet more insect damage uh, the switches look like they just pop out, so I'll pop those out before we give it a wash. Right, and this is soldered onto there, which then goes through there. So I don't think there's any chance of pulling that back through that hole, unless that's a very small... No, because that'll be soldered in there, won't it? So the only way this is going to go back through... Yeah, that's going to have to be unsoldered at some point, so we'll worry about that in a moment. Now, what have we got left here? Oh, there's some screws, and they're right down inside there. <laughs> have we got a screwdriver long enough to reach in there? And will it be too big? Oh, oh it's got to go inside a tube. My God, oh, that's a bit big. No, we need a long, it looks like Phillips number one. What have we got over here? Oh. Well, that's the Phillips number one, but I bet that's shorter, isn't it? Will that fit? Oh, look at that. It just fits. Another quarter of an inch and that would not have fitted. I'm going to have to get some really long bits. Oh, and it comes out with a magnet. One. Is that in there? Two. Oh, these are quite tight, really, considering that it's all in plastic. It seems amazing that this all works on a six volt lead acid battery. Oh I have put the lead acid battery on on charge. It's on one of my power supplies. I, I will have a look later and see if I've got a car dedicated charger that does six volts. But at the moment I've just got it on one of my power supplies and that's pumping in about seven volts. But it's not taking any current at all which makes me wonder if it's charging at all. So we'll, we'll find out in a little while. That's, and last, last one. Definitely do. So why are you not sticking to that? Oh. Drop your pick. Come on. Oh, there it is. Right, these are all the same size, aren't they? Yeah, so we'll just stick those all together somewhere. And there's another one over there. They can all go together because they're the same size. I've forgotten where the black one came from already, but hopefully it's on the video. Right, so now, this must just be the battery compartment. So that lifts out. Oh, I don't believe... There's another circuit board! What on earth? That, that's some kind of boost, isn't it? It's It's got a little transformer and... Oh, I can't see what that is from here, but it's... Well, whatever, it's got something. Um, let's see if we can get down there with this screwdriver. They look a bit bigger. 
Oh, is that a case of no? No, that's not going to work. So we'll have to go back to the little one. Oh, it's hard to believe that the screws are going to be so tight when they're into just a plastic body, but they're quite tight. I guess they're just all thumped in by machine. Right, that's out. Is it just me or does this remind you of a kettle? <laughs> right. There's the two circuit board screws. Circuit board is free. Sure, that's going to go through there. Uh, no, the yellow and the black might, might not. Let's see if we can get the yellow one to come out through there. Yellow. Well, that's interesting. That red one's damaged. Ah, oh, no, the black one can't come through because it's still connected to this. And so is the red one. Right. So, if we mark this one, I have a red dot. Remember that one's black. Right, while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm just going to mark this one as blue. I'll put BL on there. Then we can under solder that blue wire which disappears off over there. The black one should come out of there, so we might be okay with the black one. So, unless it's a different black one. <laughs> right, soldering iron's hot, so let's take this black one off. Off. This red one. This is almost like it's leaded solder, it's come off so easy. Right, and then what did we say? We thought the blue one would probably have to come off here. You watch how quick this heats up. No, it's instant. Right, I'll have a go and pulling these out. So that's the black wire. Of course it's got a connector on it. Red hasn't, so red's come out okay. So that's alright. And the black one has got a connector which is getting stuck. Oh no, I need a bit more wire pulled through first. Oh, there we go. So that's another piece of this. Let's turn this sundering iron off before I forget and melt something. Right, that's off. That's over there. We're slowly running out of pieces, aren't we? So we've just got this. That circuit board that goes through there. That will go through there. Now we'll build these. I think these will probably go around that corner, won't they? Yep, look, around there. Let's get that one around there. That one in there. Right. Uh, that's all the electrics out. You realise this may never go back together again. And then there's a screw there. Oh, you can still see plastic where this had plastic on it. That looks a little bit rusty, that one, so be careful with that. Oh, yeah, that doesn't... Oh, no, it's coming undone, though. If we ever get this working, I think we're going to have to replace that one. That's horrible. Anyway, plop that down over there. So that's our amber cover. Some plastic left over from when it was new. Right, I think that's everything. Now, I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch me clean all of this. So what I'll do is I'll sneak in when the wife's not watching, put this light in the kitchen sink and give everything a good clean. And then I'll come back and show you. It'll still be a mess, it'll just be a cleaner mess. Just in case you were wondering, the switches, they just, if you push it this side like that and then push it this side in like that, and they just pop out. Push that one down a little bit. 
and that one down a little bit just to get the clip out and the switches pop out so getting them out is easy um, this little plasticky thing was in here somewhere and it fell out so need to remember that and presumably there's one on the other side well not on that part must be oh <laughs> Uh, well, if there's one, if there was one there, that one's already fallen out. So we'll have to have a look for that later. Parts washed and drying in the sun. Right, I've got the circuit more or less connected up as I think it's supposed to be. So down here, I've got plus six volts, naught. That feeds into this circuit board over here, and I think this circuit board over here generates a high voltage which allows it to run this fluorescent light here. And that fluorescent light is controlled by this switch. So we got that far. And then this circuit board I think is just for a charge, so that's just for charging up, so that's not doing anything at the moment. Then we've got this switch here which is turning on and off that light there which is like the main floodlight which I said before is a 6 volt halogen light and then over here we've got something that I can't make head or tail of because I think that might be a circuit that makes a flash Now, when I turn this on there is a flash there and then when I turn it off nothing turn it on again there is a flash there so I don't really understand what's going on here and the other thing I don't understand is when I put a meter on here it seems to be telling me that black is positive and blue is negative so I need to find out if that's actually the case because that just seems odd to me I mean why would you not use black as negative and then perhaps the blue as the positive but in which case why is it the wrong way around um, it's possible the only part of the circuit that cares. Oh, did it flash then? Oh, it's come to life! Ah! Oh, obviously I had to disturb something long enough for it to come to life. There it goes. Oh, well, clearly the plus and minus on there are correct then, because it is now working as it was intended. Oh, it stops, oh no, it's still going. And that was the part that was in the amber bit. So we've got amber, that's flashing. Main light, sort of worky light thing, I suppose. I don't know what you'd call that, because it's a pretty dull looking light. Um, I don't think any of this is ever going to go back into that light because there doesn't seem any point. Oh, and it seems to have stopped flashing again. I think converting the whole thing over to LEDs would make far more sense, so I think that's the route I'd probably go. And I might convert it to 12 volts instead of 6 because if that battery's dead and so far it won't take a charge, then we might as well change it to lithium iron go straight to 12 volts and then we can power bigger LEDs with no problem at all. That's the glass part after cleaning with the light assembled inside it. As you can see it's come up lovely but I don't really think I'm going to be using that halogen bulb because it's just going to run too hot and use too much power. But the rest of it no, it's as good as new. In fact, I do wonder if this torch has ever actually been used by anybody. And the fluorescent part, I haven't bothered to clean because I can't see any possibility of this ever being used again. Uh, maybe this plate will be used to help hold everything inside as before and I'll clean it then. But I don't think that this bulb is ever going to be used. Um, the light output from it is terrible and it will be much easier to replace it with LEDs so I think that one is definitely a no-no right, I've made this flat piece of aluminium it's actually from a piece of old scooter and this was part of the handle <laughs> but I've hammered it flat I've cut a slot out of this piece 
this is where that used to fit and this is going to sit in there like that and that is going to hold the LEDs I hope we will see when it's in I think it sits like that in the light so this is the front and this is what I'm thinking of doing with the LEDs these are I think one watt each and they obviously want somewhere in the region of 3 volts to 5 volts because they take quite a lot of power but I'm thinking if I run it off of 12 volts and I put these in series with each other then they all get about 4 volts each and they should be pretty bright the aluminium should help keep them cool Right, there's my aluminium plate, one, two, three, wired in series and they're held on by little bolts. All I need now is where I've cut the slot here, I need to fix that, and that's going to stand in there, like that, which will then be taking the place of this. Okay, that's the LED soldered in series, fixed onto the bottom plate, it's just a couple of bolts through the bottom plate there to hold the whole thing together, so this bit should be ready to go in the light. Not the most attractive thing you've ever seen, but it should produce a fair bit of light, so that's what we need to do, test it. Okay, you watch the light, I'll connect it up to this, it says 10.8, but really of course it's a 12 volt battery from a Makita tool. So there you are, that's the sort of light we can expect from just that part of it. So, not blinding, but it's certainly, I don't know, two, three hundred times brighter than the, this silly thing that was in it before. This is a 10 watt LED left over from another project, it's already mounted on piece of aluminium to act as a heat sink. Um, I can't remember why I abandoned it but it was for something else and then it didn't work out. But amazingly it's virtually the identical size to go in there. So I just need to work out a way of getting the wires through to the other side from there and then um, we will have a 10 watt LED in there. Alright, plus and minus wires come out the back. That bolt and washer hold the whole thing together. They hold this plate on and this plate holds that. We just need to test it. Alright, prepare to be blinded. Just about to put 12 volts onto it. Now, I don't know how bright that comes across on the video. But you wouldn't want to stare at it for very long. Three switches are now in. The spotlight at the top, this front light are wired up. So that one turns that one on, that one turns these on. The flashing circuit's not wired in yet because I haven't worked out how to flash an LED so I need to do that next. At the base here Obviously we've still got what was the fluorescent light fitting and I'm in the process of making this and this is going to be the battery holder and there's the battery case so I need this battery holder to fit inside there and then that's where the new battery will fit I hope. Right, the battery box doesn't need to be this big anymore. This is the holder that's going to hold the bottom of the battery. The battery might stick up a bit further, but really you don't need any of this. So I'm going to do away with this. I'm just going to chop it off. That's the battery holder glued into the original battery case with hot melt glue. Currently there's a couple of clips holding it in place while I wait for the hot melt glue to cool down and go hard. I bought this in our local Lidl's food store. It's a 12 volt, 2 amp power battery. 
plus a 2.4 amp charger and inside we've got a charger and a battery. I'm going to put that battery inside the torch that I'm restoring and then that battery can be taken out when it's flat put in there and recharged. Battery installed. There's nothing really to hold it in so if I tip it upside down it will fall out. When this goes in it creates a sort of shelf so I have got room to tuck something like sponge or something underneath there to wedge the battery in place. Right, this piece of foam, if I push this in here, that's sitting now on top of the battery, so the battery can't move, hopefully. So if I turn it up that way, So the only thing we haven't got at the moment is the blink because I need to make up a blinking circuit. Hopefully I can finally put the lid on the bottom of this so that it can stand up on its own lid. Or should it just be the bottom so it can stand up on its own bottom? I hope we didn't give you a headache then. Oh, that's on, that's on. So there we go. That's nice and bright there. That's nice and bright there. So all we need to do now is sort out this blinking part. Now the blinking part, I'm not sure if the wires have come through. I tried to poke them through into there. Oh, it looks like they have. I'll need to design a circuit. These are the wires that we're going to use. So we've got, I think that's minus and that's plus if I remember right. So we need a circuit that's going to run off of there and then run off of this will be our blinking switch. Well, hopefully, you can see in there what I've done is I've put the original flasher board back in and the LED is where the bulb would be so the LED is now I don't want to move everything because it's a bit precarious but it's now sticking up at the top that flasher unit it, it's not any good but so far I haven't been able to make one that's any better so um, you'll see in a minute when I test it Right, as you can see, it never actually goes out. It stays on and then flashes and then goes dull, dim again and then flashes again. I think when it was a bulb, it drops down to about two and a half volts and so that was enough for the bulb to go out. But with the LED, it never goes out. I need to try and understand the circuit a little bit better because I should think there must be a way of reducing the voltage to the point where it is out even though it's an LED but so far I've not had a lot of luck it's not really the end of the world though because if you put this on the top like that you can imagine that it would actually be doing its job, it would be giving you a warning. So that's off, on. Sometimes it seems to take a little while to get flashing, so I don't know if the components have to warm up or what. Well, 